Welcome, everyone. My name is Jeff St. Laurent. This is the Live Tuesday Call. And uh, up here in the uh, Northeast, we've got a nice blizzard going on. But it doesn't stop us from uh, doing the work and um, getting connected with everybody. So um, today's topic is using the phone to follow up, you know, to follow up with potential leads, with, with clients, et cetera, and as opposed to just using virtual communication. And this is mostly in the situation where uh, maybe there's an inquiry from just a website or some interactions, or you can tell someone's interested, um, you know, following up in a conversation, wherever it might be, it's just how do we use the phone effectively in this situation. Um, and I actually have, just kind of spur of the moment, um, one of my newest clients as of yesterday, we actually used the phone to follow up with, and uh, she's agreed to come on just a little bit once I get rolling, just to kind of get her open, you know, unedited thoughts around that interaction. Um, so you can get a feel for actually what it's like on the other end. So you're not just having to take my word of, you know, being an advocate of it and doing it, but you get to kind of hear how it actually works. So um, I'm excited for that. Um, these, all these calls are recorded, and I put them on my website in my university. So my website is sellingcoaching.com, and if you go to the university, you will see the Live Tuesday call recordings. And so there's a bunch of them there. We're closing in on 60 as of now, which is cool. Um, and also I have a bunch of like over 100 uh, short videos as well, two to three minutes. And this is all education because what I do is I help coaches transition to a full-time business. And so everything I focus on is, is helping you in that direction. And I always lead everything back to selling, the skill set of selling. Obviously, my business name, Selling Coaching, because um, after doing this since 2004 full time, I realized that you know my understanding of selling and, and that work that I did has been the number one reason why not only I'm, I'm in business that long, but haven't created the success and the, the consistent success that I have. That's why I always relate back to selling because I, I want to teach you that skill set. Uh, because it's fun and it's an art, and when it's done well, it's going to be the one thing that's going to help you uh, get paid in your business. So that's what I focus on. So check out um, my university and sellingcoaching.com. Also, I have a private Facebook group. If you go to my website again, sellingcoaching.com, right at the top, you'll see a little banner there that says, hey, check out or, or join my private Facebook group. Got a lot of great stuff going on in the group. Again, I utilize that um, as a great place uh, for us to interact. So um, we've got uh, some video challenges going on in there, and so at least check it out. And if you want to join, I'd love to have you in there and get to know you a little bit better as well. Um, and then lastly, uh, right on my website, sellingcoaching.com, I have a great free resource for you, uh, the Ultimate Startup Guide for New Coaches. You'll see that right when you get uh, to the home page. So a lot of great information for you uh, on top of what I'm doing here, and that's my mission is to help you transition to full-time. And then we'll go from there. So with that being said, let's launch into today's topic. And then very shortly, I'm gonna, I want to bring um, one of my new clients on, Jenny, to kind of share her thoughts around the topic in terms of you know, using the phone to follow up. Um, and following up is obviously, you know, we hear uh, with any business that you know, the, the money's in the follow up or you've know, you got to follow up and follow up. And, and that's the key to business. And, and it's true. You know, it's, it's following up with people. Yet within following up, there's the, the questions that we have and the fears that we have wrapped up in that. And oh, how, how long do I follow up? How soon do I follow up? How aggressively do I follow up? I don't want to feel pushy when I follow up, you know? And there's all those little things that we just don't quite understand. And um, while today's topic isn't around the general topic of following up and all the different strategies of it, obviously I'm going to you know, address some of those things as an element of it. Um, but I want to really focus and highlight um, using the phone for that specifically and the value of that and its effectiveness of that. And, and what I'll say is um, when we do that, there's a lot of power in it and, and a connection. So, Jenny, are you there right now? I am. Okay. So before I get into anything and share s anything around this, um, quick snapshot uh, so you know who, who Jenny is. Um, you just share briefly how you heard about me how you found me, and then what kind of drove you to reach out to me. So just a brief summary of that. Well, I think I first heard you when I was doing my IPEC work and you were on one of the community calls or something. So I knew your name and then I signed up for that the virtual. That was years ago then probably, right? Uh, 2015, so not okay, that Okay, so long. last year, a couple of years, okay. <laughs> um, 
then I signed up for the virtual summit, the eight-hour day, and you had an hour and that, that you spoke and then came back again. And I was impressed with what you said. So I, I, I kept your name in my thoughts. And then yesterday we had a call with IPAC and you were on that um, for the MBA program. So just as we were finishing that, I threw you an email saying, I'm interviewing people to be a mentor coach. I realized that I didn't get my own coach when I graduated and I need one and I'm looking at people and I want to make that investment and so we were just getting off the call uh, from IPAC when I sent you the email. Um, and so what happened next? <laughs> so the phone ring and okay. I, haven't, I haven't even moved off my desk chair from the previous call and it was you and I thought that was brilliant because you just jumped right into it there was you know you just picked up that I was waiting for an email maybe it's tomorrow like, you know the next day and you just picked up that phone and called me and you really took me by surprise and I was thrilled by it it was good and we had a great conversation and the conversation would not have the the result would not have happened if you had emailed me back because you had me live on the phone and you could hear my voice, you could understand where what I was saying, you know, where I was coming from. You drilled down on questions and by the time we got off the phone, I who was looking to interview and you hired you. Yeah. And that's what you mean by the result, like the result of hiring me wouldn't have happened at least necessarily no. that day. No. It would not have happened if you hadn't called me. No. Absolutely. And so when you say you were surprised you know, like, just talk about, like, see if you can, like, what's the, you said you reflected on it, right? Like, you were thinking about that afterwards. Like, can you share, like, just deeper on just terms of what it did, how effective it was? What, well, it was completely, you know, like I, I reflected after we got off the phone, and I said, what a smart man. <laughs> he picked up the phone and called me. He, here's a person who said, I want something, and you picked up the phone, and you closed the sale. And I, I reflected back and I said, that's exactly how I want to do it. I want to be bold and, you know, curious. And, you know, if somebody says, hey, I was thinking maybe, I'm not sure, possibly, I'd like to hire you. I'm going to follow your lead on that. And I'm just going to pick up the phone and call the person. And I go, okay, so let's talk. Because you talk right, me so how effective You use that word like. bold. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I know some people listening might not describe themselves as bold. And obviously knowing you, I, you're, you're a bold woman, right? Like you absolutely are. And that's, that's in alignment with who you are. Um, but when you say bold, like describe what you feel. Because I, what I would want it to make sure people understand is that, you know, oh, I'm not bold like that. Or some people might perceive bold as maybe being pushy, et cetera. But obviously, you're just thinking it and feeling it. It's like, wow, that's bold is a fantastic thing, right? It's a fantastic. I think the boldness was that you didn't wait. You boldly picked up the phone and called when you saw the email. Because there wasn't five minutes lag time between me sending and you calling. So the boldness was not letting any time waste uh, yeah. in between. You said, here's a client. Here's a potential. I'm not going to let it go. So instead of saying, well, I'll call after I walk around the room for a minute or take a breather because you had just gotten off another call, you just boldly called me and it worked. Yeah. And so with that being said, uh, obviously there was value there from having heard me, you know, a couple years back and then obviously in the, in the recent interactions you've had with me with the different things that you mentioned um, and, and obviously the timing was right for you to work with a mentor coach. Um, mm -hmm. Additionally, though, you also were interviewing other coaches to potentially mm -hmm. work with, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, so how important was this phone call uh, and the timing of it, et cetera, in, in this whole process of you actually moving forward with me? I think, I think probably, I just thought of this now, I didn't think of it earlier, I think you gave me significance. I felt very significant and important that you would choose to call me right away um, when you could have chosen a thousand other things to do. But 
I was important to you, so you called me. Hmm. And that did talk about that in terms of the the buying process for you, because that's really want to I want to figure out and help extrapolate out, because I can talk about it, but this is gold. This is the, this is everything right here, because it's coming from you. Well, I was talk important. Talk about what that did for the buying yeah. process. Well, I was important, and you uh, you pretty much gave me a complimentary session, so to speak, in your uh, inquiring. Like you said, now tell me more about this, or what does that mean, or when you're interviewing other people, what are you looking for, and what do you want, and if you're still interviewing other people, am I still, you know, you know, is this something you still want to talk to me about? I mean, you were nailing me to make a decision. And you were accepting anything I said. If I said, no, I'm not ready, that was, you, I knew you were going to accept that. But you kept nailing me with questions that brought me to my, so you coached me to my decision of choosing you, um, which was great because I was, what I didn't understand is I was ripe and ready to commit. But What do you mean you were, what, how did you not understand that you were ripe and ready? Talk about that. Well, I had a process that I thought I was, you know, I thought I had a process of interviewing coaches. But what I was doing is who I truly am is I do, do things intuitively. And so my intellectual process got thrown out the window and I went to intuition when you were on the spot hearing my voice and hearing whether I was, you know, uncertain and coaching me in my uncertainty. Um, you brought me to my decision intuitively. And I, I remember chuckling and saying, yeah. <laughs> and then you said, do you have your card ready? And I went, yeah. <laughs> and I read <laughs> you my credit card number. I'm like, this is so funny. You really brought me right to where I, I'm, I was very happy. I did my happy dance when I got off the phone. I said, yay, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, well, that's an important point, though, is, is like, yeah, you did it. Like, what, what were you so happy about that you did? Well, I was ready. I did it, and I didn't have to make this painful. And, you know, I have a follow-up call next week, and you said, well, do you want to do this after the follow-up call? And I went, uh, no. <laughs> so. And why? Why didn't you want to do it after the follow-up call? Because I didn't want to hire her. I wanted to hire you. Yes. And, and, and for those people, go ahead. Sorry, keep going. And it would not have happened if you hadn't called me on the phone. Yes. It that's, would not the key. have happened. If you, if you had emailed me back and answered my questions, you know, which of course was, you know, um, how much time is it going to take me to get what I want and how much is it going to cost me? If you had just answered those questions, you would have gone in the pile. But you called me and you nailed me and... and we already discussed I like to be challenged. I gave you permission, so you did, and we had a great phone call. Yeah, and, and that's the point right there I'll, I'll highlight, too, is, is I just would have, I would have gone in the pile. You would have gone in and, the pile, yeah. And that's what I, I don't want everyone to do is I don't want you to go in the pile. If there's a pile, there might not be a pile, but also a, a point being is that when you're ready, when someone's ready to hire and someone's ready to move, even yeah. if they're looking at other options, and, and most of the time, people do look at other options, depending on what circumstance it is. Um, in, in this case, they might not have a plethora of coaches, you know, just available to them. Most people don't know that if they see you at an event, et cetera. But with that being said, you just still don't want to go in the pile. And, and when they're ready to go, you, you want to talk to them. That's the biggest piece. One of the things you said, Jen, was um, nailing, like I was nailing you down. Like I was nailing mm -hmm. you with, with those questions. Mm -hmm. And I know... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and listening to people and working with people too is part of their apprehension is, is well, I don't want to feel pushy, et cetera. So when you use the word nailing, there's, <laughs> there could be a, an assumption or interpretation on maybe a listener's perspective of like, oh, well, I don't, I don't want to nail someone. I don't want to, you know what I mean? Go, but like, I needed Talk about it. what you mean by that. So I, that needed, you, I needed it. I needed the help. You heard that I needed the help. You heard that you needed to nail me because you came – you can't, in the beginning of the call, you know, we were chatting and, and, you know, filling in on, you know, what we had in common, et cetera. And, and you know, it was very social. And, and then you asked me a couple of questions and then you saw what you needed to see. So you went in for the, 
for the deep dive because you heard that I needed it. Yeah. You did hear, I, I knew you heard that I needed it, and so you went for it. And you wouldn't have done it unless you, if, if I hadn't given you the cue. So, that, so I guess the point I would make is listen to, to, I would listen to my client, and if it looks like they need me to coach them to their decision um, and help them, that's, I need to do that. I need to nail them if that's what they're asking me to do. Yeah, and, and so exactly, because I, I heard that you needed that. I, I saw mm -hmm. that direction, so that's where I went to. Mm -hmm. And nailing is just more of just, like you said, it's really was coaching and, and yeah. but helping you to the place to decide, you know, where you want it to go. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a point here for, for people listening to this, too, is that, um, and this is where I, I wanted to understand more, too, so people can get more value from what this is, is that um, you were going to interview other people. Mm -hmm. and you were going to kind of look into what else is out there as well. Mm -hmm. And so I could clearly hear as we, as we went through this call, and, and this call ended up being probably, what, 45 minutes or so? I think so, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. About, about 45 yeah. minutes. So, um, and, and I had no intention of how, how long or short it would be. I just, it, I just right. went with it, and, and that's right. not the point. Is, it's just, you know, if you don't have the time, you don't have the time, but uh, if I only had 15 minutes, I would have done what I needed to do in, in that 15 minute time frame, you know? Yeah. Um, and whether that would have resulted in her hiring me or not, or leading into a complimentary session. Um, and that was my intention is if, if she qualified to, you know, potentially be a client of mine and the need and the timing was there, I would have invited her to a complimentary call, you know, but it kind of turned into a complimentary call in some ways. But where I want to get at is this is an important point is, is how I helped you towards that decision for people to understand is that because you were interviewing other people, um, I was in the mindset of thinking, okay, well, because I, I also asked you, when were you going to be interviewing these other people? And wasn't it next week? Mm -hmm. Right? It was yeah. next week, right? Yeah. So I'm thinking, I'm like, all right, well, I don't want to, like, have this complimentary session with her and then have to wait till, you know, a week or whenever it would be to interview other people. Like, I want to have a complimentary session with her, and I want her to be able to decide, like, do you want to work with me or not right now? Because I, I know, and this is important for us to understand, this is when someone works with you, meaning when someone does that complimentary session, assuming they're well qualified and they're ready to go, um, ideally it's a great session, and they're gonna, they want to hire you right then and there. So if they've got to kind of wait and be like, all right, well, okay, now I've got to go check out these other people, you know, it kind of kills that. And it kills that value, and people buy in in that moment when they know it's intuitively correct. Well, when you were telling when you were telling me um, when you kept quizzing me and you wouldn't let it go, you kept saying, you know, well, when are you going to interview these other people, and what do you need from these other people to tell you what you to make your decision, etc. Because you were holding some boundaries about what you were doing, you get now that I look back at it, you were telling me how valuable you were and that you weren't just going to hang out with me and wait till I made decisions on other people. You were valuable and if you want to do this now, let's do this now. But you didn't say that. You just implied that you were very valuable. Yeah, talk about that a little bit more. Um, well, it was sort of awkward for me when you kept asking me about the other interviews and the other coaches and what are you looking for and have you found what you you were looking for and I basically said no I think it's you you know and it was sort of awkward for me but it's what brought me to my decision so you are you also gave me permission in my coaching call to let there be awkward moments because that's really where the the decision is made Yes, and I'll say that differently. In, in the awkwardness, that's where the value is, correct? Right, right. Because you even said that. Like, that's what, what brought value to me is, like, well, I was just going to wait around just for you to, like, well, who yeah. else is out there type of thing. <laughs> um, and I didn't say that, but through I was talking, and it's almost I'll, I'll related to dating. It's just like, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. well, I, I'm looking in these, to these two other guys, <laughs> and I, I, I'm figuring out who I want to kind of date right now or, or marry or whatever. And it's just like, well, so let me just date these other people first. And it's like, <laughs> hey, woman, you want to you want to be with me or not? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it really and, was like that, and it was it was awkward. 
Yeah, and, and so when you put people in that spot, and this is what I want, I want to show you is, is when you do this, sometimes there's, there's a way, like Jan, what, what I'm hearing Jan saying too is, is the way I did it was effective, but there was an intention behind it. Is that fair? Yes. Right? Yeah. So I, I'm, was I thinking, oh, I've got to make her feel awkward? No, I wasn't making her feel awkward. What I was thinking was, is, listen, I can hear right now that she wants to work with me. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm kind of calling her out on that, basically, and saying, it sounds like you want to work with me. I'm pretty much sure I said that to you. Correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong. It sounds like you want to work with mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. right? And you're like, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. So then I just challenge it. I'm like, okay, so if you know you want to work with me now, <laughs> why are you waiting to kind of, quote, date these other men? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and then that, that would, that's where that, you're like, yeah, you're right. I'm. This is okay. This is yeah. kind of awkward now, right? Yeah. But what you're and saying is, is that that actually helped you to your decision. And the other thing you wouldn't do is you wouldn't tell me how much. I asked you a couple times in the layers of the conversation, and you kept circling around to. You weren't going to tell me until I told you I was interested. Which yes. I wanted right. to know how much because I have a budget. And you weren't going to tell me until how much meant nothing because I had already hired you. And that, it worked that way. It did work that way. Say that again. That was, that was the best phrase I've heard in a while. How, till, you didn't tell me until how much meant nothing. That's right. gold. Talk about that. Well, I mean, when I got off the phone, I go, oh, my gosh, what did I just do? I said, I just did what I needed to do. So I didn't let the money or the sense of scarcity, or any of the blocks that money right now in my coaching career will put in front of me, I did it, and I felt really good about it. So it, the money was pretty much, it meant nothing, because the value was way, I, I, what I wanted to achieve, I knew I was going to achieve, so the money was irrelevant. Yes, exactly. So how much didn't matter. That's, that's such a key phrase. So in, in other words, you'd asked me several times, and even in the email, well, how much is it? <laughs> right. And I, I never answered me. you. You wouldn't tell me. And, until, and, um, we, until, you, until I got the credit card out, and then you told me. <laughs> exactly. Um, and this is an important point, because even I, I know some of my mentor and clients, is, it's challenges around this, because when someone asks, they're like, we're we, we want to tell them or, or we feel obligated in some ways to tell them, right? Um, but so, so just a real point right there, how was that for you? So you ask and you ask several times. Um, I didn't necessarily avoid it, but I, we just kind of continued the conversation. How was that for you on your end? I wasn't offended. I was still involved in the conversation and I knew you were going to tell me because you had to. It's just I respected the conversation and, and what I was getting out of it, that it, it wasn't as critical a piece. And if you had told me earlier, I may have said that's too much. Yeah. Why? Because I have blocks around uh, spending money right now and I'm not making money. Mm -hmm. But I now mm -hmm. know that, that I'm going to make way more money next month than I did this month because I committed to the accountability and the mentoring that, I, that we're going to do. Ah, uh, and th this is so, this is so valuable. Thank you for doing this, Jan. Um, so in other words, there's a point where, or, or let me ask it so for you can share it. At what point, because you knew, you knew there's a cost to it, right? And you yeah. knew, and you even saying now looking back, you're like, yeah, there's a point where it, you might not have done it or it would have, you would have thought, oh, it's too much. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, the value wasn't there yet. Right. Right. At some point in our conversation, though, the value was enough where the cost didn't matter. Right. At what point do you feel that was, if, if there was actually a point? When you coached me to the decision to hire you before you told me how much. You told me after the fact. I wasn't. I was now, I was now in no man's land. I was already, I'm, I'm not turning back. I've already turned the ship around and, you know, 
I was hiring you no matter what, and then I'd have to figure out how to pay you. And you gave me options, and I went, ah, just, you know, here. <laughs> here, let's just do this. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I always do. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, exactly, Sue. I, I, there's a point of, of helping someone towards the decision, but then mm -hmm. also um, knowing when that timing's right and when that value is there. Exactly. Awesome. You know, and this is good because I know we, we've gone on, um, gone on from just the phone piece, but it's a culmination of, of the whole experience. And, and I'll be honest, Jenny, I went into this conversation um, not thinking like, oh, you know, she's going to hire me. You, you, you seem very well qualified and you seem ready. We've had a few interactions in the past, you know, online in my Facebook group and things like that. Um, but I, my intention wasn't like, oh, I'm going to try and get her to hire me or I want her to hire me. Um, my intention was, oh, I'm going to call Janny up to find out, you know, why is she writing me or why is she considering working with someone like myself? And then if I feel as if she's, like, in that place and she really wants it, and not only that, she really wants it now, um, then, okay, well, we'll set up a, a call entry session with her and, and we'll go from there. Um, when we got to the end, though, it was the point of she was ready to go. And do you remember how it ended? Like, do you remember how we got to that point of actually doing it now versus moving on to a complimentary session? Um, refresh me. I, I think I do. Yeah. Well, just that point where it's just like you were, you were ready to go. And then it's actually funny because I was challenging you around, um, you know, basically, do you need to have those calls? Yes. Oh, and, yeah. and then you said something along the I don't remember exactly, but I remember smiling when you said it. You're like, <laughs> well, I can do anything I want. <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> you need, yeah, you said, do you need to make these calls and do this process? And I said, no, I get to do anything I want. It's, a, it's all about me. So. Yeah, and, and that's when, when she said that, I'm like, okay, she's ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Right. And that, would you agree on your end? Absolutely. I, yeah. I so. laughed when I said that because it was a silly statement, but it was my biggest truth. Yeah, I can do exactly. It. I, can do it. I can do anything I want. So I'm going to hire you right now and screw the process. Yeah. And these are the signs that I want you to be able to listen for is, you know, when that's, when that's the case, we can approach it. And this, that's when yeah. we move forward into now is appropriate. I, I could tell the value is there, and that's when we could talk about the price and kind of the details right. moving forward. So, right. um, Jenny, before we go, this is all, I mean, this has been priceless. Um, I, I want to share a few other things around this before I, I kind of stop the education. But before I do that and then open up the call to everybody else, I'm curious, uh, any last thoughts you have around this that you wanted to add, if any? Well, this whole, yesterday's phone call, the, pro, the whole thing that happened, email to phone call to hiring you, is my model now for phone calls with clients. I am going to try to get a sign-up when I call. So instead of being afraid of calling and getting a rejection, I'm going to be too excited about seeing if I can repeat this with, with my clients. Awesome, yeah, so you're taking it into your own, your own spot. Yeah, you gave me permission awesome. to do what we did yesterday um, and, play, and do it forward in my, my coaching. Awesome. So, yeah, Jenny, thank you. Thank you for sharing this. this is to, I love, totally spur of the moment, um, and th thank you, so thank you so much. I'm gonna mute you for a second so I can kind of close off the call and then I'll open it up to everybody else. Sure. Um, Oh, yeah, that was great. So one thing that uh, Jenny just said, too, is, you know, that she's going to try, you know, she's going to try and do this and try and close that client when you, when you call. And one point I want to make, too, is, is that um, when you do these calls, um, I actually don't want you to try and do that per se. Um, I want you to know the value of doing something like this. In other words, the value of using the phone. And, and obviously, as articulated very well through, you know, the conversation here, for everybody is that, you know, I want you to do it with the intention of finding out where this person's at. In other words, the, this call is a part of the qualifying process. It's a part of uh, the qualifying process to determine, as I always talk about in selling, right, is there's two aspects to selling. There's need and there's timing. So I needed to find out her need. Obviously, she had a need enough to reach out to me. Um, and then once I determine that need, I want to find out, well, how, how big is this and how badly does she want it? And then the most important part is, is why now? And obviously, why now was a big thing. She really wanted it now. Uh, but then in this case, obviously, there was just like, well, there's other people involved. And I'm like, all right, well, basically, how, how, 
how much do you know you want to work with me? And it's like, well, why are you waiting? You know, and we go to that spot. And so where I want to go with you is, is just sharing with this is after this call w with Jenny, um, I had had another inquiry. And this is just so you know, these are, inquiries aren't just coming in. It's like, whoa, Jeff, you're just magically getting inquiries. This is uh, earlier on I asked, you know, well, how did you find me? And the reason I asked Jenny how you found me, how you heard about me, is, um, is so you can get an idea of the things that I'm doing, as you all know. Like I'm doing stuff with different coaching schools. I'm doing my own stuff, obviously, within um, – you know, like these Tuesday calls, uh, I'm on Facebook, you know, I'm, I'm there, I'm in groups, I'm commenting, I'm answering questions, I'm doing a lot of this, this free stuff, if you will, this valuable free stuff, but that's the, the marketing, if you will, of, of adding value to what I do so then people follow me. Um, so I wanted you to kind of see that, you know, when you, when you do those marketing efforts, people come to you and they come to you much better qualified, but even with that being said, we've got to be able to qualify them. Um, so literally, like after... The, I hung up with Jenny, there was another person whose email came in, and I knew this person would be emailing me because I talked to some other people prior to that, and um, they were going to refer this person to me because they, they needed some help. And, of course, they had the number on there as well. And I, I was like, after doing I had three calls before Jenny, I had my workout, and I was like, oh, I need to eat, and I'm, I'm hungry, and I need to stop. And then that email came in, and I'm like, oh, you know what? Um, just I'm going to call him up. So I called him up, and we were on the phone for probably another 45 minutes or so. Again, same intention was I was just qualifying to find out, you know, where is this person at? What are they looking for? You know, am I the right person for them? Um, it wasn't even they were thinking about working with me per se. It was like they needed some help, and I was going to just find out what they needed for help to be able to maybe best direct them. And as it turns out, you know, 45 minutes later or so, um, they hired me, and, and it got to the point where I, I asked at the end, uh, you know, wh why did you hire me? Because I wanted to understand, because this person didn't come at it wanting to hire me specifically like Jan did, thinking like, oh, I want a mentor coach, and I'm considering you. This person was like, they didn't know they needed a mentor coach. They know they needed some help. They just didn't know what kind of help, and I was kind of helping sort that out to see how I could direct them. So when they hired me, you know, I understood why, why or how I could help them. I said, well, what made you hire me? And the first thing this person said was, well, first off, you called me. And, and he, that, he's like, that set you apart from everything else and the timeliness of it. He's like, you called me right away. And he's like, that, that's, that impressed me. And that told me that, you know, you were, you're serious about this and you're good at what you do. And I want to share those things with you. And, you know, kind of corresponding with what Jani said is, yeah, it's like when you do this and the sooner you do it, the better, and you, and you might be thinking, well, Jeff, I got a full time job, and you know, I, you know, I've got kids, or I can't just have 50 minutes during the middle of the day where I can just call someone and you know have this long conversation. And so, going back to Jenny's point of what she said earlier on the call is, is that, you know, she was expecting an email, and she was expecting it maybe the next day. You know, the great part about this is, is that most people aren't expecting you to call them within, you know, minutes of them sending the email. That, like, if you can do that, fantastic. I mean, even if I had had five minutes prior to a call, I will tell you I would have called her and, you know, assuming I had the number, I would have called her and just said, even left a voicemail and had said, hey, you know, Jane, I just got your email. Um, I want to give you a quick call. I got a call in a few minutes, but I wanted to reach out and just let you know I received your email. And um, I'll give you a call a little, little bit later on. I might have set a time just to kind of chat and find out a little bit more of what you're looking for and see if, uh, how I can assist you. You know, so even something like that would have, would have done it. Um, I had another inquiry, and, and she's actually on the call right now, um, you know, listening in. And uh, I got an email from her this morning, and I had a few things to do and before I got ready for the call. Um, the difference was is in this person's email, I didn't have this person's number. And I will tell you, if I had this person's number, you know, if I was checking my email in bed, I would have called her before I even got up and said, hey, how's it going? What's, what's going on? Um, and, and created that conversation. Or if I didn't have time, I would have said, you know, do you have a time a little bit later today or tomorrow where we could have a brief conversation? You know, and, it, and a lot of people were asking, you know, before I started this call about the language, you know, what is the language and the intention behind it? Don't worry so much about the language, though I'll give you some. I've already shared some of it just with what I said. But if you have the intention, if the right intention, the language will follow naturally. That's why I, I'm sharing more of 
of why why I do it and how I do it and what I'm what am I thinking? Like, in other words, I'm not thinking, oh, I'm trying to get this person to hire me. I'm thinking, hey, I want to find out why they're reaching out to me, why they're asking this question, why are they asking me for my coaching packages, why are they asking me more of what I do. I want to find that out. Those are examples of what people might be asking, you know, and I want to qualify them. And then if they qualify, meaning if they have a need, if, if that need is big enough and, and if the timing of it is now, then I could ask if they're interested in doing a complimentary session where they can get a feel for how we could work together. And at the end, if they see value, then they can hire me or not. How does that sound to you? Right? That's, that's what I would do from there. So you can see that qualification process. Um, and when you have the right intention the, and, you, and you're holding true to that, then what happens is your language comes out in a, in a much more appropriate manner without even you having to try or think about what to say or, or needing a script, per se. Like I say, I'm not a big advocate of scripts uh, when it comes to sales and things like that is because you're, not, you're, trying, you're in the script, you're not in the moment, and you're not with the right intention, per se. Um, and so if you have that right intention, that's where it goes where it's supposed to go. Um, now, it's not to say that I, didn't, I don't want them to hire me, or I'm not hoping that that could be the end result. However, I can't allow that to you know, guide me. You know, I have to be open whether they want to hire me or not. You know, the other person that hired me, especially because I didn't know where they were, um, in, in some cases, based on what they were doing, et cetera, I wasn't necessarily like, attached to anything. You know, I was like, oh, I don't even care if they hire me. Um, even with Jenny, it wasn't like, oh, it doesn't matter whether she hires me or not. I don't, I don't need her to hire me or not. And that's why I want you to have more leads than time, meaning you know, if, if this person doesn't work out or they don't qualify, I don't want to just give them a complimentary session to give them a complimentary session because I want to, I want to go to the next person or the next person who's ready and who wants it now and who's serious about this because that's why I want to invest my time uh, because then what you'll do is you have more time to do you know, potential qualifying calls like this and so you can invest the, the bulk of your time in the people that are really ready to go. And that's kind of the, the whole point behind it all. Um, and last piece I want to say before I open up the call is um, the reason why I'll do this versus you know, just an email. And it doesn't mean I never follow up via email uh, because um, I do. Number one, if there's no number, because not all the time you have the number. Um, but if you follow up by number, you could, if you can follow up by email because you don't have the number um, or you don't have the time necessarily, then you can always ask for the number and say, hey, I'd love to give you a quick call. Do you have a moment you know, in a couple hours? You know, give them a dis specific day or time. You know, I'd love to chat real, real quickly to find out a little bit more what you're looking for. You know, I would have called you now, but I don't have your number type of thing. Um, or it's just to let them know. It says, hey, I'm actually on a call right now or I'm just getting on a call or whatever it is. Or I'm you know, doing a few things right now, but... Um, you know, I want to let you know I received your email, I received your inquiry, and I want to connect with you. What's the best time to reach out? You know, what's your number? I'd love to give you a call. So you can ask for those things. You know, I'm heading out of work now, or I'm just heading into work, or you know, whatever it is. You, know, you can communicate with them. But the point is, is, I always say get back to people somehow as, as close to when the inquiry comes in or co as close to when they ask the question. That's, that's the point of that is because of the timing piece. Remember, when we qualify, there's need and then there's timing. So if we're missing out, uh, if, we, if we understand that, we know that when they're, when they're asking this question, hey, tell me more about your coaching packages. Tell me a little bit more about what you do or a more serious, hey, I'm considering working with a coach and I saw you here. I went to your event. I watched your blah, blah, blah. I listened to your call and um, tell me more about this. You know, that's the timing. That's the timing, or at least you want to see that's the timing. Because in my experience, when someone asks that question, it's rare for people to step up. And when they step up and they do reach out to you, you know something's going on. It's a brave move for them. It's a bold move for them because it means that they're at least somewhat serious enough to do that. Most people think about it, but they never do it. That's the difference. When, when we pass thinking about it to actually taking action, it's a bold move for them. They just hit submit or they hit send, and it's like, oh, my God, what did I do? That's scary for those people. So now reach out for them and, and take the time. That's going to make the difference because, you know what, no one else is doing it. That's the thing. No one else is doing it. No one's writing handwritten thank you cards anymore. But then you, you write them a handwritten letter, and it's just like, what the heck is this, you know, <laughs> instead of a computer-generated handwritten letter that looks like it was handwritten but it's not you know it's it's that extra effort that goes the mile and that that makes the difference in in 
And nowadays, a phone call is like a handwritten letter. That's, I guess, what I'm trying to say. That's like the handwritten letter um, because people don't do that. And additionally, this could, this could happen in an email thread or, or a Facebook Messenger thread. You know, I, I've done this before, too, many times where, you know, we're having an email thread and we're going back and forth or it's an instant messenger or something like that on Facebook and we're going back and forth and I get to the point where I'm realizing I'm like, wow, this person, this person I, could, I could help or it sounds like they've got a big enough need, et cetera. And, and if I don't have their number, like I'll Facebook stalk them like while we're in the conversation, see if I can find a number online. Sometimes if they have a website or something like that, they've got a phone number and in the middle of the conversation, I'll just call them up and they'll be just like, hello? I'm like, hey, it's Jeff. It's like, yeah, we were just talking. I'm like, I know. I'm like, I'm like, why are we talking, you know, on, on email? Why are we talking on Messenger when we could be talking live? Do you have a few minutes? I always like to clear the time. And they're like, yeah. And, and just like Danny said, like, they're like, wow, this is great. That's right there. Boom. There's big value. You just, you just built yourself up value-wise. And I'm not, I'm not trying to do that, oh, I just because I want to build value. But it's like, this is how we get there. And, and as Jenny said, that, that her hiring me, same thing with the other guy, that, that those, both those transactions would not have happened at least that day, and who knows if ever, um, but at least that day um, if I hadn't have called them, right? And so the difference between, oh, I don't have the time, I don't want to do, or the apprehension of it, or as some people said earlier, you know, I'm afraid to get the no, um, I, I attack the no, I want the no. In other words, I actually don't want the no, let me rephrase that, I want the decision. Yes or no, that's a decision. Yes or no frees you because yes, okay, that puts thousands of dollars in your bank account and it allows you to do your gift in terms of helping somebody. What else could be better than that, right? That's a great decision. But a no is also, I can say, somewhat equally great in the sense that it frees you up to say, okay, next. And you have to worry about you know, them pretending to be interested and you know, stringing you along and you kind of pretending to go with it thinking you might have a potential client when they really have no idea and then they blow you off on a complimentary session. I mean, that's the reality of it.